Hey everyone, welcome back. So I've been wanting to review this video for a long time because I love his story told in bubbles. The original title of this video was Who Started World War II and they changed it into Germany Good, Schwartz is Bad. I don't know this channel, it's called Mr. Spherical and it's going to be a good opportunity for me to discover it. So let's go. Treaty is holding me back, but after the whole World War I thing, the Allies won't let me get away with anything, won't they? <laughs> who, who said that? Hello, it's me, your conscience calling. Time to start a war, baby. Yeah. Oh, what is this? Oh, oh, oh God, get it off. I think that now we just saw Russia who was in the process of becoming the USSR. We are in 1919, so they are in the middle of a civil war since 1917 and that would last until 1921. Between the Reds, the Communists and the Whites, basically everyone else. And the outcome of this civil war is going to be appealing uh, with around 3 million deaths and an estimated loss of population of around 12 million people. Oh, get it off. Well, I am so glad that this war is over and that my friends didn't lose. Here's to the winners. Yeah, 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 yeah. And also to the not so winners. I resent this treaty and its harsh stipulations. Well, you're just going to have to accept your terms, Germany. You started the war, so you have to pay for it. But 33 billion? Ah! No buts. And also, I can't believe I'm gonna say this, but no guns. What? That's right. Uh, you must disarm and keep your military teeny tiny. Also, Poland's free again, like me. Poland and Czechoslovakia, free! We're making him out of some of your territory. Oh, and Russians. And that guy's. I guess this is Austria. And yeah, they are a bit tired indeed after the war. So I think that uh, what they are representing is the signing of the Paris Peace Treaty in 1919. It's the only day where Germany was invited to the, not negotiation, but they are just invited to, to sign. When it comes to the terms of the Paris Peace Treaty, Germany had to surrender all of its military equipment. They were forbidden to rearm. Their army was limited to 100,000 soldiers. No military service, no tanks, no aircrafts. And they have to pay 142 billion marks. And uh, to justify all of it, they are judged as being guilty for starting the war. Agreed? Look, you don't really have a choice, man. Fine, whatever. If that's everything, I'll see you guys later. Yeah, 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 fine. See you, bro. Well, there we go, chaps. War. Defeated. You know, do you guys ever wonder what the whole war was even about? Yes, every day. Um, and I'd say an unhealthy mix of imperialism, militarism, and nationalism. This sucks! I lost territory! I can't play with guns as much, and I owe the Allies so much money! Sounds like a recipe for another war! <laughs> that strange voice from nowhere is right! I should militarize! Wait, no! Bad! Who said that? Conditions like this, resentment, economic downturn, are perfect for stoking up people's emotions! Me a German- So here we have the appearance of, well, let's call him Hitball, who's going to use the resentment caused by the Paris Peace Treaty and the hardships that Germany suffered. But what I want to outline, and it is not mentioned here, is that some generals such as Hindenburg and Ludendorff are going to create the stab in the back myth is the idea that the German army was actually not defeated by the Allied, it was betrayed by enemies 
from the inside, such, such as communists and Jews. Are you suggesting I harness my people's resentment and hopelessness to get back our territory and uplift the German people through violence? But that won't make people happy. Nine, but what will is expansion. More territory. Territory with Germans in it. I'm so it's the Lebensraum to survive. Germany had to expand everywhere in order to gain more resources to be able to feed their own population. They have to remove the threat of the imperialist and capitalist powers in the West and of Judeo-Bolshevism in the East. For all of these people want the Germans dead. New eternal empire. I, I don't know. The Allies, the treaty, yeah, to start, ask for a little break on the payments. Tell them we've got hyperinflation. Everything is expensive. That would help us. Yeah, hyperinflation. So Germany was extremely in debt at the end of the war. And because the war was expensive and the economy had been devastated by the Allied blockade. In 1914, one dollar was something like four marks. In 1923, a dollar is something like 4.2 billion marks. You could see people with wheelbarrows of banknotes going out to buy bread. And I still remember the anecdote about people using banknotes to line the walls of their houses because the, the money had no value at all. A lot. It can't hurt to ask, can it? I guess. Guys, I'm sorry to interrupt, but Maréchal Hubert has studied my analytics and he realized that most of my viewers aren't subscribed yet. So Hubert is looking at you and is judging you right now. Don't hesitate to subscribe because Hubert has been a very good boy this year. Thank you very much and now back to the video. Hey guys, I... Hey, Germany, what's up? You got some money to fix all that war damage or what? Uh, well, uh, things are not so hot here in Germany town right now. Well, it is winter. <laughs> yeah, uh, actually, I was wondering if we could alter the payment schedule. Concessions? I suppose we could alter it a bit, but, you know, things are kind of getting depressed in the world. Here. Yeah, uh, France had its own problem. The northern part and the richest part of the country has been devastated by the war. How about this? I'll loan you some money and you can pay your debt with it. This is unacceptable! Everything is expensive right now! I can't even afford schnitzel and... Oh, oh dear, the moustache, guys. The moustache is coming. Red alert. Oh, calm down. It's not that big a deal. How show you not a big deal? Huh. That guy have a stick. I can't believe this! How am I supposed to survive? See? They don't care what happens to us. But maybe they also want to notice what we're up to. What are you proposing? Let me take over. Just for a bit. What, what are you gonna do? Oh! Just some little speeches! The evils of communism! The glory of fascism! So evils of communism, the Communist Party was very strong in Germany in between the wars. You had violent clashes between the communists, the national socialists and the police. It's kind of hard to have a real democracy in such conditions. Totally normal stuff. It's the only way to unify our people, rebuild from the inside, out. Okay, I guess that's... But... Was that a dream? Oh, what? Oh, oh no! It's a parliament! Oh, 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 oh no! What is he? Things are heating up around here! You! What have you done? I gave our people a violent dream to remedy their desperation and enemies everywhere to keep them afraid! No, 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 no! Nein! That's not what I... Ah, what is this? You want Germany to be strong, don't you? Now the German people are becoming united in hate. Not all of them. You're doing this at the expense of... Ah, you're weak. You've never built the empire we need. But I will. No. Stop. Nein! The 
Reichstag fire, it ball came to power, but not democratically as it is often portrayed. In 1933, he organized the Reichstag fire and put it on the communists with an accused called, uh, his name was Marinus van der Lubbe, who confessed he was a communist activist, but he was above all mentally deranged. You can still find images and footages of his trial and you see that the guy is clearly not uh, in, in a position to be judged. Actually, the fire was starting by the SA and above all, it would allow Hitball to twist the arm of the democracy in Germany. He will make the parliament vote to give him extraordinary rights, basically suppressing a lot of individual, civil and political liberty, forbidding the Communist Party in Germany. And it was passed with a great deal of intimidation with basically the SA everywhere. So this is how Hitball came to power. Hello, uh, guys. You seen Czechoslovakia? What do you need him for? Oh, he's been uh, <clears throat> mean to some friends of mine. Uh, so we're just going to have a little... Uh... Oh, okay, so now we jump to Czechoslovakia. Meanwhile, there was the Ansus, the peaceful annexation of Austria by Germany in total violation of Versailles. And also you had the remilitarization of the Rhineland, who was also in total violation of the Paris Peace Treaty. Uh, Doc, that sounds ominous, but I choose to assume that you're going to be chill about this. <laughs> but of course! We also have not a problem, but a misrepresentation here. The US is no longer present in the debates since the signing of the Treaty of Versailles and they return to a traditional policy of isolationism. I am the chillingest. Okay, seems legit. Czechoslovakia is in the bathroom. Oh, my dumb guy. Yeah. Hey, do you guys think the Great Depression negatively impacted Germany? You mean in the way that could cause widespread social unrest? Making it easy for a violent and racist dictator to manipulate his way into power? Uh, yeah. There are ethnic Germans yeah. now. Give them to us. What the hell, You just cut the part of my... Yeah. Ah, I've got the Sudet in land. Make Germans Germany again. The annexation of the Sudetenland, it's a part of Czechoslovakia where you have a large number of ethnic Germans. So this agreement was signed in Munich, but Czechoslovakia was actually not invited to the conference. It was signed between France, the UK, Italy with Mussolini and Germany. And England and France pursued a policy of appeasement, the famous one, and wanted to give Hitball concessions in the hope that he's going to calm down. But actually, he won't. No! I told you, you pansy! The Allies are weak, just like you! We can take what we want! Hey. I guess you were right. Of course I was! Now we'll flex the true might of the German military! You, you can't mean Poland. Our territory before the war, and it will be yet again! No, you can't! What about Russia? He's not going to like this. <laughs> Excellent point. But perhaps we can offer him a deal. Yeah! Why does this keep happening? Yeah! Totally weird. So, what do you think? I get this teensy, tiny little bit, and you get that huge bit. It is a pretty good deal, but how do I know you won't attack me later? We, uh, we can make a non-aggression pact. Well, all right, you've sold me. What should we tell the others? Uh, well, Definitely don't tell them we're dividing Poland. And you attack Poland when? I don't know, like two days? Holy Lenin's brain! I have to prepare! Yeah, and actually this is very true. The USSR was not ready at all to attack Poland. The offensive was rushed and the Red Army 
performed very very poorly and when they met with the Wehrmacht they gave him such a bad impression that it's going to make Germany overconfident a couple years later when they are going to launch Barbarossa. So here we just saw the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact, so it's the name of the two foreign ministers who signed it. Uh, it's a non-aggression pact, including very important trade agreements under which the USSR would send oil and food to Germany. And they will agree upon the division of Europe into spheres of influence, where the USSR will gain the Baltic states, part of Poland and also they will intervene in Finland a couple months after that. You've gone too far. You don't think I should attack Poland because it will start a war with Britain and France? We've just gone through one war. We don't need another. Well, we have to help the native Germans being oppressed in Poland. Besides, Britain and France won't. All right. Well, that settles it, old chap. Defensive pact. <laughs> now, if anyone attacks you all of a sudden, we'll be there to help you out. Eventually. Uh, no worries. I have tons of horses in my army. Nobody can stand up against horse cavalry. Uh, right, yes. They still have the winged USARs. I think they are referring here to a um, myth is that the Polish army used lancers against German tanks and it's going to be heavily caricaturized, but in fact, this incident only happened once. Um, it's true that Poland had many cavalry divisions, but they fought on foot and with rifles, and in fact, the German army too still relied heavily on horses, such as the Red Army, for example. Horse cavalry, of course. You're still attacking in a couple of days? Scheiß, boss! I have to think about this! I can't believe this! Don't you give me that look! I'm not scared! You think I'm scared? Fine! I'll show you scared! La, 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 la. I attacked today, but we should arrive separately, you know? Oh, yes, agreed! <laughs> I will wait! He ball gambles at every every time, uh, and he gambled the fact that the Allied wouldn't resist and declare war on him, and he tried to sell the war against Poland, not as a war, but it was like a police intervention. He pretended that some ethnic Germans were oppressed. Uh, in areas such as Danzig, nowadays Gdansk, there was a fake attack on a German border post, I think it's in Wroclaw, where the Polish army allegedly attacked the Germans. So the whole offensive on Poland was not sold as a war, but as a, a special intervention, but the Allied didn't buy it. Germany? Want to see my horses? Yeah! Nobody can stop me! Whoa! Germany? What the hell? Now we are going to have to go to war with you? Again? Such a nuisance! Oh uh, yeah? And when are you going to go to war with me, huh? Well, uh, we need a few months to get our army free. Whoa! Whoa! What the bloody heck? Oh yeah, uh, sorry about that. <laughs> Anyways, gotta go! Anyways, see you in a few months, I guess. Well, that was unexpected. Is, is this our fault? Well, uh, <clears throat> maybe a bit. But he's also become a total jerk. Is no, I don't think it's your fault, guys. I think people did their best in incredibly difficult circumstances. If you really want to blame someone, look at the NSDAP and at the people who held them to power. He's gotten slick at using emotional manipulation to rile up people for violence. So much yelling! At least it couldn't possibly get worse between now and when we finish preparing our armies. Yeah, 
they are completely right. The French army was impressive on the paper, but totally dysfunctional and would not be ready for real operation until at least 1941. And the BEF was very small and not really ready for a continental war such as World War II. Anyway, that was really fun. Don't hesitate to let me know if you want to see more review of this channel here. And as always, have a nice day. Bye.